Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Today I'll be talking about how to succeed at university. Now just a quick background on myself. Um, I work at a university in student support, so I work as a tutor and a marker. And there's a few things that I've noticed, a few trends that I've noticed with students. And all students come with their little foibles, but there's a tends to be a bit of a pattern of things that students do wrong and go on to fail university. So I've comprised a list of guidelines. Now they're only simple and some of them are fairly common sense. But even though they're common sense, many students get it wrong. I don't know why, but they get it wrong a lot. So here we go. Number one, complete all assessment pieces and hand them in on time. It sounds simple, but lots of students don't do it. Now just anecdotally, I would say that 90%, probably 80 to 90% of students who finish all their assignments and get them in on time, go on to pass the, pass the course. Now I'd say a similar percentage who fail to complete assessment pieces, or they don't get them in on time, go on to fail or get an incomplete, that is they have to do make-up work. So either of those results you don't want. Some students resort to getting an extension. Now university policy usually dictates that extensions are only granted for emergency situations or situations that are beyond the student's control. However, many students have found ways to, you know, make up bullshit excuses that usually pull on the heartstrings of the teacher and they get an extension anyway. I've seen that a lot. But, most teachers aren't in the business of being harsh and denying people extensions, so usually they'll get granted. But does that mean it's a good? Does that mean it's good to get an extension? I would say no. I'll tell you why. An extension is a double-edged sword. Yeah, sure, you'll get an extra week to write that 3,000 word essay. And what does that result in? Well, yeah, you'll spend the extra week madly rushing to get that essay in, get it in on time, but then realize, oh, my other classes, I've got to do two more assignments. Oh, they're due in on Monday. Oh, crap, I need extensions for them too. And it snowballs. So throughout the semester, you end up having to get all these extensions, and by the end, there's just too many assignments to complete, and you fail the, the semester. So extensions are bad. Use them for what they're meant for, emergencies. Anyway, the point of my first guideline is to complete all assessment pieces and get them in on time. Guideline 2. Give the teacher what they ask for. Sounds simple enough, right? But many students get this wrong. Some students take it upon themselves to add extra information to their answer. Now not only does that waste time, it's not answering the question. Just answer the question as it's stated. Some students even question the legitimacy or the relevance of the question. For example, there was a question asking the students to write some HTML to output a table to the screen with the following headers and columns and data. And some students reply, Oh, I've been a web developer for four years. I've never needed to write HTML like this. Even if I did, I would just look it up on Google. Well, good on you. But the question's asking you to write HTML. Now, you either do that and get some marks, or you don't do it and you get zero. I'm afraid that's how it works. Yes, you might be right. Maybe the question is completely irrelevant. Maybe in real life you'd never need to do that. Fine. But the question isn't asking you, how would you go about outputting a table to the screen? The question is asking you, please write HTML markup language to output a table to the screen. You need to answer the question. Don't get hung up on how smart you are. Just answer the question as it's stated. More often than not, it's the mature age students who have this hang-up about how much they already know. But then they've really got to question why they're at university. And I'll tell you the normal response. It's because they need the piece of paper. In order to get the better job or to get the promotion, they need the degree. So they've got to shut up and just answer the question, get the assignments in, and they'll be successful. But don't write, I've been a race car driver for 20 years, I know all about angular momentum. Good on you. Answer the question. Guideline 3. Answer every question. Sure, this is related to Guideline 2, but for whatever reason, some students don't answer every question. They leave a blank space. Now if I'm a marker, and I'm marking an exam, and I see a blank space for a question, my hands are tied. I can only give you a zero. Now if you write something, I mean literally anything, you write something that's somewhat on topic, you'll at least get half a mark or one mark. 
Now, as a marker, I'm not in the business of trying to fail students. I'm in the business of trying to give you marks to help you pass. Now, if you give me nothing, there's nothing I can do. You get zero. So don't leave blanks. Answer anything. For example, there's a question, uh, name the advantages of the client-server model. Okay, just say you know nothing about the client-server model. Fine. But you know that a server is usually faster or more powerful than a client. Write that down and you'll get one mark. Yeah, it's not a complete answer, but you'll get something. Answer every question. It's common sense. Guideline 4. Prioritize. Another way of putting this is don't be a perfectionist and don't overcommit. Now, some courses have lots and lots of readings. Like one course recently I saw for a student had 50 readings, sorry, 50 recommended readings. And what do some students do? They take it upon themselves to read every single one. Now these are journal articles. Some of them are like 20 pages long. Why would you bother reading all 50? But for whatever reason, some students think they must. And what happens? They end up prioritizing their reading over their assignments and then fail to get their assignments in or require extensions. Not good. So as an example, just say the assignment was asking for you to compare and contrast three of the recommended readings. Now I would recommend only needing to skim through say five or six of the readings. You don't need to read all of them. And then pick your top three and read them in full. Another area where prioritizing is important and where many students fall down is in exams. Now just say an exam comprises of 10 questions. I often see the first question is answered very well, very completely. Often too much information is granted. Sure, they get 100% for that first question. And maybe the second question, maybe the third question. But then you see, question four, ah, oh, it's only half answered. Question five, ah, oh, only half answered. Question six, seven, eight, nine, ten, not answered or only a one-line response. A bit silly, isn't it? So if you're doing a two-hour exam and there are 10 questions, well, you should be allocating 10 to 12 minutes per question. There's no use spending 30 minutes on the first question if you're going to fail the exam, is there? Just say the first question was, solve the following equation for x. So it's a quadratic equation. There are a number of different ways to solve it. You don't need to show all methods. Some students do. I don't know why. They take it upon themselves to show various ways of solving something. The question didn't ask you, solve the following using as many methods as possible. No, the question asked you, solve the following equation. So just give them one method and move on. Don't be a perfectionist. Some students refuse to start an assignment until they've done all the prerequisite work. Well, sometimes that's good, but most of the time that's just delaying the process. You should jump in and start your assignment. When you find there's something that you can't answer, look it up at that time. But you don't need to study everything before starting an assignment. If you have a task to create a countdown timer in JavaScript, well, jump in there and start programming. You don't need to know everything about JavaScript before attempting it. And if you did do that, you'd never get started. So get in there. Get your hands dirty and start your assignments early. Look up information as you need it. Guideline 5. Don't be lazy. Yes, this is a fairly obvious thing too, and it kind of fits in with the other guidelines. But clearly some students aren't listening. Don't be lazy. If you want to be at uni, be at uni. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. But don't waste everyone's time by coming in and not doing assignments and making up bullshit reasons why you need an extension and basically being a bad student. Look, uni is voluntary. You don't have to be there. If you don't want to be there, don't come. Simple as that, really. Now, of course, some people feel that they're forced, like they need the pay piece of paper. Well, in that case, just grin and bear it. Just as a note, I'm an incredibly good student. I've done lots of study and I've done very well being a student. But that said, I'm a very bad employee. I've worked in like the corporate sector and I hate it. I'm not good at having managers and sub-managers, team leaders and all the rest of it. That sort of environment doesn't suit me well. So I might be a good student, but I'm not, <laughs> I promise you that didn't necessarily mean I was a good employee. So I'm not going to say that these guidelines are good for ed everything in life. They're not necessarily good for the office environment. Although some of these guidelines probably do cross over and can be used in the office environment. Anyway, in summary, guideline one. Complete all assignments and get them in on time. Guideline 2. Do what is asked of you. Give the teacher what they want. Answer the question. Guideline 3. Always answer every question. Don't leave a blank. You'll get zero. Guideline 4. Prioritize. Don't overcommit. Don't be a perfectionist. Guideline 5. Don't be lazy. Okay, and that's all I have to say. I'm done.